Hello, my name is Emily, and today we'll be discussing a 2013 study conducted by Russell, Baker, and McNulty regarding attachment insecurity and infidelity in marriage, and whether or not studies of dating relationships also inform us about marital relationships. So basically, this study discusses attachment styles and attachment theory, and how that may play into predicting infidelity in marriage. But it also integrates attachment theory which is a psychological concept that we're going to get a little bit into right now. So what is attachment theory? What are attachment styles? So first, there are three different attachment styles. The first is an anxious or ambivalent attachment style, and this is often categorized by someone who worries that they're going to be get too close to someone or that others won't get as close to them as they would like and they worry that romantic partners may not really love them or won't stay with them and often tend to really want to be close to a romantic partner. An avoidant attachment style is someone or someone who has an avoidant attachment style is someone who frequently feels like they shouldn't get too close to someone. Um, they may not share uh, personal information with someone else and they are frequently uncomfortable and may not trust other people. And then there's a secure attachment style. So someone with a secure attachment style may get close to others. Um, they're comfortable sharing about themselves and listening to other people share about themselves. And they're okay with having people depend on them. So the researchers looked into these three attachment styles and they wanted to know how these three attachment styles could predict infidelity in a marriage. So basically they just asked, does attachment style predict infidelity? Um, and they hypothesized that attachment anxious attachment styles, so the people who indicated that they are reluctant to get close to people that they love, that may lead to engaging in infidelity on the individual's part. And a person with an avoidant attachment style may be more likely to be in a relationship in which their partners may engage in infidelity. So in order to conduct this, they found a sample of 207 newlywed couples from northern Ohio and eastern Tennessee. And these people were all in their mid-20s, all recently married, and over 90% of them were Caucasian. So basically, they answered questionnaires over the course of four years. So these questionnaires over the course of four years assessed attachment style, marital and sexual satisfaction, personality, and infidelity. And they asked questions and they used specific scales to measure these different things. And eventually, they found that attachment anxiety, so those people who we talked about having um, or being nervous that their partner is going to leave them was correlated not only with their own infidelity, like the researcher predicted, but also the infidelity of their partner. Additionally, an avoidant attachment style, which they predicted may lead to infidelity of a partner, actually didn't and was neg negatively correlated with their own infidelity. However, these findings, although they seem kind of massive, are not without limitation. Uh, the sample that the researchers used was pretty homogenous in age, ethnicity, race, and location. And that would mean that generalizing to a group outside of their mid-20s who maybe don't live in the United States or in rural areas, and people who aren't Caucasian may not have similar results. The generalizing to them may be extremely difficult. Additionally, the study only included newlyweds, so it's really difficult to generalize to longer-term marriages and whether or not newlyweds are more likely to engage in infidelity is something for another research question, but it's something that the researchers considered um, when they looked at their, their findings. So why does this matter? These are huge claims. They are intimidating, and, and it's important to address why it matters. In psychological theory, it expands on attachment theory, which is a massive part of developmental psychology, um, but can also be applied to things like uh, marriage counseling, which is another really important part. Uh, this information is clinically significant because it can improve in marriage counseling and could potentially uh, impact the way marriage counseling will change maybe after an infidelity incident. Additionally, it provides us a deeper understanding of the effects of attachment style on relationships. Although this study was focused on marital infidelity, it could also give us more information to just regular relationships. If someone isn't married, how will they engage in infidelity and, and what does that mean for a relationship dynamic? So thank you so much. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and have a nice day.